a lovely way to start our show today with Woody performing a trumpet voluntary by Jeremiah Clark. We're now going to travel to Woody's garden and he's going to show us a whole array of his instruments and a few that you might not normally expect to be heard in an orchestra and also a new way of signalling. Hello, my name is Woody and I want to show you the natural trumpet and also the modern trumpet because the natural trumpet is twice the length of the modern trumpet. And I want to tell you that the sounds are produced in the same way with the lips. And to be able to play the natural trumpet, you need to warm up the lips first of all. And to warm up the lips, I need to do something like this. It's a nice day, so we're in the garden. And this table is normally where we drink tea. But I've brought down some of my trumpets to show you from Renaissance times all the way up to modern times. But rather than play you the sounds on this natural trumpet, I want to show you an instrument that we can find in the garden that plays exactly the same as a natural trumpet. Now, of course, I won't need this natural trumpet, but as you can see over here, I've got some garden hoses. This one I do. I put a little funnel in the end just to make it a little bit louder. See if you recognize this tune that we sometimes play on natural trumpets. So why don't we all play garden hoses in the orchestra? Well, perhaps it sounds a bit better on the natural trumpet. I'll leave that to you to judge perhaps. The trumpet is a signalling instrument and the point of a signalling instrument is to carry messages across a distance and when you can't physically talk to each other or when you're trying to reach a crowd. A bit like the sound of uh, an ambulance or a police car. This beautiful horse is an ex-military horse and served with the household cavalry. Of course we don't use horses in wartime situations anymore, thankfully, but in the 16th and 17th centuries the soldiers of the horse troop would have known all of the commands that the trumpeter would have played on the battlefield. I'm going to play you three of those battle commands now. The first one is clap on your saddles. A 17th century description of that command told us when the soldier heareth he shall presently ready his horse and truss up his sack of necessaries and make ready for his journey. And the second one I'm going to play you is called Mount on Horseback. The soldier shall bridle his horse, bring him forth and mount his back. And the third one I'm going to play is called Go to Your Colours. To retire and effectively protect your flag or your colours when there's a lull in the fighting or perhaps when the battle is won. Now I've just realised that this is useful in times of social distancing when viruses affect our lives. Now I could give our neighbours a call but we've agreed on two simple trumpet signals to carry messages. For example, our neighbours go to the same supermarket as we do and we can tell them what the queue is like there. The first trumpet call that I've made up that our neighbours now know means there's quite a long queue in the supermarket. You might want to wait a few hours before you go there. The second trumpet call means I've just been to the supermarket and there are not many toilet rolls left. You might want to get there quickly before they all go. Now 
Now I'm going to prove to you that it works. Come and follow me. After that light-hearted look at how we can signal in today's times, we're now going to turn to two different pieces, one for the court, reputed to have been written by a very famous king, and then a tune that would have been heard in the tavern. Hello, Wifey and I are going to play you a piece called Pastime with Good Company, which was allegedly written by Henry VIII. Maybe for one of his wives? Uh, we'll never be absolutely sure if it was him who wrote it, but it's a great piece. And it's arranged here for clarinet and viola. Welcome back to our front room and time to make some more music with my double bass and today I've chosen one of my favourite bass lines, it's a drone. So I'm going to play one note and you're going to have to do all the work. We thought we'd sing a Tudor round from Thomas Ravenscroft. Now the other songs I've done in other episodes I think you probably knew already. You might not know this one, Chris doesn't know it. So I'm going to teach it to Chris and that will give you a chance to learn it as well. So I'm going to get my starting note. And the words are, hey ho, nobody home. So not quite as we are now when everybody is very much at home. Hey ho, nobody home. Meat nor drink nor money have I none. Yet will I be very merry. So that's what I like about this song is the thinking that things are not how we might want them to be at the moment. Maybe not for the same reasons that Thomas Ravenscroft was writing about, but still, we can be merry when we can. So, the tune. Hey ho, nobody home. Hey ho, nobody home. Got that so far? Next line, remember the next one is the meat, the drink and the money. And we don't have any of it, none of it do we have. Meat nor drink nor money have I none. Meat nor drink nor money have I none. Yet will I be very merry, merry. Yet will I be very merry, merry. Excellent. And I think we need both of those merry merries in there at the end. So if we put it all together, it goes, shall I do it all first and then I'll do it with you? Hey ho, nobody home, meat nor drink nor money have I none, yet will I be very merry, merry. Hey ho, nobody home, meat nor drink nor money have I none, yet will I be very merry, merry. So hopefully you've got the song well enough now that we can do it in a round. 
and I can add my drone, my pedal note. Chris has also got some lovely hand chimes here and he's going to add those in for some sound effects. And we're going to sing it all together once. And then we're feeling quite brave about our new technology skills in this house. Now that we've had all these weeks to sort of experiment with things, we are going to try and do a three part round, even though there are only two of us on camera at the moment. I'm hoping I can add the third part later. So wherever you are, if you've got enough people in the room, you can divide yourself into groups so that you've got three groups. And when we go into the round, the next voice will start when the people before have sung Hey ho, nobody home. Then you start with your hey, no drink, ho, no money have, have I none. none. You see how it works? Anyway, here goes. Good luck. <laughs> Drink nor money have I none. Yes, will I be very merry, merry? Hey ho, nobody home. Meat hey nor ho, drink nor money have I none. Yes, no drink nor money have I none. Yes, will I be very merry, merry? Manage a three part round, well done. See you again another time. True to form, Waffy certainly dressed up for Henry VIII, I thought. We're now going to turn to Andy, who's going to tell us about the Dulcian, and then we're going to meet some more of Woody's instruments, and then we're going to follow that by a movement from Monteverdi's Vespers, which the OE recorded, and both Woody and Andy are playing on. It's the most wonderful, glorious music. And we're going to show you some images of urban landscapes and also the countryside where we're just thinking about lots of things growing. Hello, I'm Andy and I play uh, bassoon in the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment with the uh, education team. And uh, I'm delighted to welcome you to my attic on a rather rainy April day. I've got uh, my dulcian here. Uh, a dulcian, or kirtle to give it its English name, uh, is in a way the ancestor or the forerunner of the bassoon. It's a double reed instrument and what's unusual about it, particularly at the time it was invented in the middle of the 16th century, probably in Italy, is that the, the tube goes all the way down here, turns a U-bend at the bottom and then comes all the way back up so that the sounding length of the instrument is, is twice this length here and that gives it that rich bass sound. This particular instrument is copied from a German uh, instrument and there it was often called the chorist fagot because it was used to accompany in choirs. And uh, you might hear a dulcian if you listen to a piece like the Monteverdi Vespers, uh, reinforcing the bass line. I'm going to play an English tune for you. Uh, it's called Lord Willoughby's Welcome Home, at least that's one of its names. Uh, it was a popular tune in the Netherlands and Germany in the 17th century, but it probably originates in the late 16th century because Lord Willoughby was uh, an English military hero who had great success against the Spanish 
in the Netherlands in the 1580s. Uh, so here we are, a Tudor Elizabethan tune, Lord Willoughby's Welcome Home, played on the Kirtle. This is the cornetto and I love playing this instrument. It's got lots of finger holes down its body and it's curved as you can see and it's played with a mouthpiece that's a lot smaller than a trumpet mouthpiece. It's so small in fact I'm just going to show you up close. So This is a cornetto mouthpiece on the top. Really tiny and the huge hunk of a mouthpiece underneath is a trumpet mouthpiece and I, I have to play both in the orchestra Sometimes one after the other, and I find that quite taxing. I have to practice quite a lot. <laughs> um, and it was this instrument was known throughout Europe. Some of the best players played in Europe, partly because they played under the famous composer Claudio Monteverdi. And this is one of his pieces um, that I love playing. And this is the mute cornet, so it's part of the same family as the other cornet, but as you can see it's not curved, it's just straight. It looks a little bit like a baseball bat or a table leg in fact, but it's got finger holes just like the other cornet. What's different about it though, it's a lot quieter and also the mouthpiece doesn't come out of the instrument. It's all part, it's all part of the instrument, if you, I don't know if you can see that. It's beautifully made and I love playing things from King Henry VIII's time. And one of the most famous pieces from King Henry VIII's time was a piece called King Harry Pavan.
We've called today's episode Pastime with Good Company and I really hope you've enjoyed our company today. We're going to finish with some bagpipes, a hurdy-gurdy, another medley from Chris and Cecilia and a final thought from John Henry. These are a set of bagpipes copied from the paintings by, by Bruegel uh, such as Peasant's Wedding, uh, Peasant's Dance and so on, you might have seen those paintings. Bagpipes are found all over Europe in the uh, Middle Ages and Renaissance and later, well into the Baroque period. And uh, they're found in England as well as in Scotland and Ireland, they're found in France, they're found in Germany, they're found everywhere. So these are a set of bagpipes from what we might have then called the Low Countries, uh, Belgium, Holland, that sort of area. The idea of the bag is simply to supply air to the pipes which have reeds inside them to make the sound and it means that you can get a continuous supply of air and it helps the player breathing. And you squeeze the bag to make the air go into the pipes. The very long pipes are the drones, they simply make one continuous sound. I'll give you an example. So that's continuous. And this pipe, which has the finger holes, is called the chanter and it plays the tune. Uh, so I'm going to play you um, a couple of dance pieces from the mid 16th century. Um, they come from a French collection and uh, they're called Bron de Poitou. Uh, the Bron was a, a round dance, one of the oldest type of dances uh, that we know, uh, danced in a circle. And Branle means to sway or to swing and, and, and the dancers in the circle go from side to side the circle sways backwards and forwards. It's a wonderful dance. There are many different types of bron. Uh, this is called a bron de Poitou. The Poitou is a region in France and apparently the uh, people of Poitou were known uh, for their fondness of the bagpipe. Uh, so here we go with uh, some bron de Poitou. Oh, and uh, as it's May Day coming up, you might uh, remember in that ballet by uh, the Elizabethan composer Thomas Morley, he talks about the bagpipe. Uh, the words go, and to the bagpipe sound, the nymphs tread out their ground. All right, nymphs, get ready to tread. Here we go. Here's another instrument that I play. It's called the hurdy-gurdy and it's got lots of strings on its body. Some of them just play one note, it's called drone strings. I love those drone strings, they're brilliant. And some strings just play the melody. Uh, 
Anyway, I thought I'd just sing you a song called All the Birds. Listen to this. Of all the birds that ever I see, the owls the fairest in her degree. To wit, to woo, to whom drinks that the may to thee. This song is well sung, I'll make you a bow, and he is a maid that drinketh now. Nose, 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 and I gave thee my jolly red nose. Cinnamon and ginger, not my gang clothes, and that gave me my jolly red nose. Nose, 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 and that gave me my jolly red nose. Cinnamon and ginger, not my gang clothes, and that gave me my jolly red nose. Welcome back to our front room, and we hope you'll join us for a play along now. So if you have an instrument within reach, now is the time to grab it. And even if you don't have an instrument, if you can tap your foot on the floor or pat the arm of a chair, you'll be able to join in. We're thinking about a pavan rhythm, that slow, quick, quick, slow, quick, quick. In fact, Chris is going to give us a quick demo now. I'm going to join in too. To get the idea so we are going to play that and then over the top i'm going to sing a few medleys so we're going to start with pastime with good company by king henry the eighth himself and you might have already heard that in this episode but we're going to do it our way and with your instruments and then we'll take it into a may madrigal also from the 16th century and then we'll finish we're going to ditch the pavan rhythm for the end and just take it up tempo into a 19th century folk dance romp. So, instruments at the ready, here we go. medley. We look forward to having you back in our front room again soon.
Goodbye.